Hi and welcome back to the Business Career College video series. In this video we're going to look at a variety of products I'll identify as guaranteed minimum withdrawal benefit products. They don't all necessarily take exactly that name but we'll see similar characteristics across of a bunch of investments that sort of look like this and sometimes you'll see reference to a guaranteed minimum lifetime benefit or a guaranteed lifetime benefit or a lifetime income benefit some variation on that it's not that every insurer sells these but most insurers have at least tried out some variation on this so what it what it is it's going to use a segregated fund base and we're going to have the normal guarantees associated with a segregated fund. So we're going to see, as we usually do, a maturity guarantee and a death benefit guarantee. But the thing that sets it apart is the third guarantee that we're going to attach here. We're going to give it sort of an annuity type of feature where we're going to give it an income guarantee as well. So the contracts here can be a little bit complicated which is why I think the video might help here so the way this is gonna work you invest some amount of money now I'm going to use a hundred thousand dollars here in practice you might not actually be able to do this with a hundred thousand dollars some insurers have significantly restricted the amount of money they will allow as deposits into a GMWB so you might be limited to fifty thousand dollars in one contract here or something like that so the first thing that we're going to see, the thing that now sets this apart, the way this income benefit works, we're going to have some sort of a base guarantee where we say this $100,000 is going to grow by, let's say, a guaranteed, just for the sake of argument, 5% each year. So 5% of $100,000 is $5,000. And let's say that we have a 15-year growth period. Now, I'm not saying this is always going to be 15 years. It could be shorter. It could be longer. But there's going to typically be some period here where you're going to get a guaranteed amount of growth. So imagine this linear growth. No compounding here. Just a nice clean growth. And we'll fast forward a number of years here. And we get out to the future. And when we get to our, let's say, 15 years, we'd have our original $100,000 plus our new $75,000 we would have $175,000 as our base. That's good. So now, let's say, and I'm not going to say this is always the case, but let's say that we have $175,000 as our base and a 5% income rate. It might be less than 5%. A lot of them are 4% today. It might be higher than 5%, it might be 6%, or you've seen 7% in the past. Generally, the older you are, the more the insurer will give you today, like other annuity type of products. So 5% of $175,000 will give us an $8,750 income guarantee. So now you know every year for as long as you own this product you're guaranteed an income of eighty seven hundred and fifty dollars assuming it's a lifetime guarantee some of the guarantees are for a period of time like fifteen years and the contract will describe that you have to be cautious in selecting your contract all of the things that i've described in white here are variable and not every contract looks the same you really have to pay attention to what the contract says so this is sort of your, for lack of a better term, worst case scenario. This is the guarantee associated with the SEG fund. Things can certainly go better than this. And what we're really hoping for is obviously for things to go better. So let's say you took your original $100,000, you invest it. Now it is invested like in a SEG fund. In the early days of this type of investment, you would have found uh, pretty common actually to take a lot of equity risk here but today insurers have typically limited what you can do you might have a risk limit here maybe where you can do 70 percent equity at the maximum and 30 percent fixed income and that might not be exactly right but something like that 
So now you invest that, and if you get returns better than 5%, so let's say that your returns actually come out better than 5%. Now, that has to be 5% net of MER, because, of course, there's management expense ratio that applies against everything that's happening along the way here. And I'll talk about MER more in a moment. But let's say that we do better than that 5% guaranteed base, which is actually not a 5% annualized return. You have to be real careful with that. That is a simple interest calculation. And in fact, that's about the same as getting a 3.8% return annualized. If you took $100,000 and you invested it for 15 years and you had 175, that's about a 3.8% annualized return. So it's not exactly the same as saying 5% per year. The 5% year per year was all based on that base $100,000. Now let's say you did better than that. So you do better than the 175, and you end up at 200, just to keep my math easy. So now $200,000 would be your new base. Essentially, that renders the 175 meaningless. And now we would say, all right, $200,000, and let's assume it is a 5% guaranteed income still. So $10,000 now would be your annual income. So now your income is at $10,000 a year instead of eighty-seven fifty, And things could potentially get better than that as well. Because if your return now exceeds that 5%, so let's say in the first year you got a 7% return, again, net of MER. But let's say you got a 7% return. That means you had $14,000. And, of course, we took out $10,000 here. So what would happen now is we would bump your new base up to 204000 And we would use that as the calculation. So then 204000 times 5%. So instead of $10,200, or sorry, $10,000 of income, now you've got $10,200 of income. Now that assumes that that's how the reset works. It's not always going to work like that, but you might have a three-year reset, for example. So you do have to watch that again, that one year of good performance may not be enough. You might need three years of net positive performance. This can get quite complicated. And it is worth noting that it can be exceedingly difficult to make that 7% return, that 7% return, because of two factors. First off, you're limited in how much risk you can take. So we're not 100% equity here. You have to normally hold a pretty hefty fixed income component. And then the other issue is that the management expense ratio on these things is pretty high typically. And I don't want to pick on MERs. I'm always real hesitant to talk about MERs as a reason not to invest. But the thing to recognize here is that a lot of this product really does sort of rely, the upsides on it rely on getting returns better than what's guaranteed. The guarantees give you that base that allows you to take the risk. So your MERs on this thing are going to be usually in the 35 to 4.5% range. And you might find lower or higher MERs, but that's something to watch. That really means to get the 7% return that I showed over here, you would have to get 10 and a half ish maybe 11 percent or better so that could be challenging now one of the problems that confronted these products in their early days less the case now because of the restrictions that i mentioned earlier where you can't necessarily take out an unlimited amount or put an unlimited amount of money into these things i said a lot of insurers cap this at 50 or 100,000. but what happened in the early days with these things was people would put all of their money into it. Of course, any investment strategy where you put all your eggs into one basket, especially real close to retirement, is always going to pay off. That's sarcasm for those that didn't pick it up. But what happened then was people were putting their money in here all into one contract, and then they were saying, oh, you know what? I've got unexpected event over here. Uh, somebody gets sick, somebody retires early, one of the kids needs money to start a business, or bail themselves out of financial difficulty or whatever it is, and we end up with a withdrawal right here. 
And this product is not designed for this. In fact, if you take a withdrawal here, essentially what happens is it throws all your guarantees out. And now you can basically use this amount as your new base for all your calculations. And because that's your new base, now you're starting off from a smaller amount. So you make that withdrawal. Sorry, I showed the withdrawal from the market value, should it, or from the uh, guaranteed value. The withdrawal came from the market value. And that's a real problem. So now you've substantially reduced everything, and essentially you're starting over from lower amounts for all those for the purpose of those future calculations. So that's one of the places where we got into some trouble here around this product. There were some lawsuits around that in especially 2009 and 2010 when people realized that they maybe shouldn't have taken money out. They probably should have had better advice before they took withdrawals out. And they made those bad decisions to take withdrawals at a downtime in the markets. Of course, with a segregated fund, you never want to take money out when you're down because of the guarantees. And unfortunately, sometimes in retirement, you just don't have a choice. So I do like this product. I'm a fan of this. As I'm a fan of annuities, I'm a fan of it in moderation, but I think this can provide a nice base part of our retirement portfolio. I would not suggest using this. And this is entirely me speaking. This is entirely my opinion. Obviously, you're going to get good advice from your own financial planner, or you're going to hopefully be the financial planner giving advice. And that should help you to, sorry, that person should help you to make the right decision. There are lots and lots of factors that go into any retirement income calculation. This is one tool in the toolbox. So I hope this is helpful. I hope you have learned something from this, and I hope you enjoy your continued studies. Thank you very much.